there's only going to be celebrities, and then there's going to be good artists. And, bec and because there's going to be so many good artists, what is that going to mean? That means the overall sales of everybody is going to come down. It's nothing has changed, it's just being redistributed. So instead of one person selling 25 million records, you're going to have 25 people selling 1 million records. The or long you tail. may have 50 people selling 500,000 records. So you, 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 you get my point. The long tail, basically. A, a, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so, so yeah, now, yeah. you know, th there's nev there's, those days are, are, are long gone because if you can look back at the last 10 years, what new artists came out in the last 10 years? You could probably count them on your hand. That are superstar caliber. Because right far as I'm concerned, we're still talking about 20, 15 to 20 year old artists. Mariah Carey's, the Mary J. Blige's, you know, the, the usual Michael Jackson, suspect. Madonna, Bruce the, 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 the common, Prince. common. I'm not even talking common in the roots. Right. I'm, not, I'm not even going like crazy. I'm, I'm talking just the artists right. that, that, that have the cutting edge artists. But, they're, they're, they're the superstars now. I think part of that is a function of our attention span as a media receiving society. Things have changed a whole lot. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're used to seeing something new every five or 15 seconds now. So the fact that, you know, I don't want to watch Mariah Carey for a long time. You know, I think that has a lot to do with it. Nick, how has this change in technology and the culture around it affected how you work as a professional? What's how is your work life different than it was five years ago, let's say? Well, um, economically, it's a disaster. I'll, I'll okay. be frank. That's being straight. Uh, you know, for no me. Shit. You uh, look good. Also. Thanks. Thanks. I invested. Got a tan. Yeah. So you, that can't you look be too tan. bad. <laughs> um, it's better to look marvelous than to. Yeah, to <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, um, the budgets aren't there. To, you can't spend money like you used to. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, it depends on your perspective. Um, I was spoiled for a period, as I'm sure Bob was and Hank was. And we were all spoiled and we spent money and we made money and studios cost $2,000 a day and that's okay. How are, um, you, are you, how are you adjusting to this then? Are you well, I mean, you just have to reevaluate everything you know. You have to scale back everything and you have to make it work with what you've got. You, you put together, you piece together a record now. You used to sit back and kind of conceptualize a recording and I used to keep a big log, a big notebook and write down all the things I wanted to do and how we would do them, studios, musicians, travel. Travel? <laughs> There's no money. You know, they're not gonna send you anywhere. Um, you, you just don't do that anymore. You piece it together. The last record I worked on was pieced together in three different countries and then I didn't even meet the artists until the last mix stage. There's a band I worked with called the Les Ogues de Baalbec. I do a lot of French music. They recorded in France and in a few different countries in Africa and the files were sent to me in New York and I assembled the files and did like a after the fact production, and then mixed everything here in New York, and the band came uh, towards the end of the process. And that's unheard, that was unheard of a number of, you know, just a short number of years ago, but that's the reality. The only way they can afford me, and the only way that I could make it work, and the only way that I couldn't, they couldn't afford to send me to France, and then to Africa, bop around a few countries, then come back to New York, in the past, yes, that was not an issue. That was great, you know. It was a fantastic, uh, life-enriching experience on someone else's dime. But, uh, you know, unfortunately and fortunately, that's why I say, because now it's more streamlined and there's less money wasted and um, you kind of cut to the meat of the matter much quicker. I'm having weird thoughts as you're saying this, and, 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 and it's this. It, it's almost like you're saying that what separates me because when I met you, you we were at Green Street yes. working on, the, on, on Sonic Youth and on Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back. But it seems like what you're saying is what separates me is the knowledge I have and that I've acquired as an engineer and, and as a producer. But technology is not separating me from any of these people here. I mean, receiving files, anybody can receive files. No, not at all. I mean, and that's the thing you have to remember. Uh, I don't mean to speak down at all to anyone, but just because you have the technology doesn't necessarily mean you could make a great record. And, and I mean that with all due respect. Um, 
you still have to learn how to record and you still have to learn how to produce and you still have to do your homework and yeah. know the history and know how to arrange and just you have to know your business you have to know your music and uh, that's knowing your music in many different ways and not necessarily knowing how to write it down or in the traditional yeah. sense but knowing what you want to do with your technology I i'm old enough to remember when the first max came out and i remember when we when we, we first started seeing people doing desktop printing everyone was doing what I call um, hostage note design. And that is you use all the fonts that are in the set on your letter. So like there'd be like 20 fonts on <laughs> one document just because you could do it. People were just like going crazy with this stuff. And it took a while before people knew enough about desktop, compu desktop printing and the software where they said, this is a computer that can allow me to do things very simply that were hard to do before. And now I can use it very skillfully as opposed to just like, I've got it, let me use it. I've got it, let me use it. I've got effects, let me use all of them. Mm -hmm. And so you see that what you're saying here is that what's still important, even if one has technology, is refinement, mm -hmm. skill, mm -hmm. patience, mm -hmm. learning, mm -hmm. taking time with yourself to get to know yourself as a creative person so that you can wield that tool or those tools in a fine and a sophisticated way, yes. as opposed to just like blindly striking out at whatever's in front of well, you. Well, it's very similar to the point that Hank made that we have been given the keys to the kingdom, but now we don't know what to do with them. It's the same in it from the business standpoint. Mm -hmm. It's the same from the production standpoint. I mean, you can hear so many um, top 40 type recordings that pull out all the stops, use every plugin, use every effect because you can it's cheap I, I oh hell I bought this plug-in set for like three might, grand. As, well I might as well use every yeah. single one of them it, you have to learn how not to use the stuff you you're have to you're right how but just not, to how not to use it just yeah. to play devil's advocate remember rock and roll was born of doing things wrong mm -hmm. okay so I mean creative you're I, I totally get it guys mm -hmm. and one of the things I say that's an interesting uh, byproduct of the shakeout in the production support system, studio, studio personnel, the people who are left actually really do something. And they're pretty good because you can't survive unless you are. But you know, I agree with you It because it, it, I have to fix other people's mistakes. A lot of my mixing work I get and it was recorded in someone's living room and you know, not that a record, you know, a record's about a compelling performance of a great song. So what I do is window dressing, but people happen to like it. But I, I also <laughs> think that out of this, and again, this is a case of technology influencing art, I think out of this, we're going to hear some new stuff that we never even thought of because some kids said, well, no, I like the kick drum backwards because I can do it, and then it's going to be really cool when it comes, you know. And, and just to, re to reiterate on w what everybody's been saying, and, and I, I agree that, you know, you definitely have to change your lifestyle. You know, I came to TechServe like five years ago, and I sold all my studio equipment. And I saw a guy named, named Kareem. They, they, everybody directed me to Kareem. They said, hey, he's black, go to Kareem. <laughs> so, so, and, and, I, you know, I, and Kareem hooked me up with my own little system. Superstar. Excuse me, he hooked me up with my, with my own system. And, and that's what I use now. I mean, I'm from the days of, you know, I used to have Green Street, you know, both rooms. I would be in both rooms running back and forth and, and, and basically just making sure that Nick was in one, Rodway was in another. I'm, I'm making sure, I'm monitoring what goes on in both rooms. Now I gotta sit there and learn like how to use compression. You know, and I used to be, I used to tell Nick all the time, I don't wanna know that shit. Don't tell me how that works. Cause I just wanna feel it, if it didn't feel right, I'm not fucking with it. Hank, now Hank. Now I gotta really learn this stuff. So Hank, call me. I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, uh, Joanne, we got his number right. <laughs> what, what, what would all of you say to the audience assembled here uh, before we go to their questions? What would you say that they should absolutely do going forward in, in order to get the most success in this, in this trans, in this, as we're making this, trans, this transition? What should they absolutely not do? And what, should they, what would you strongly encourage them to do? All of you. Buy my book. <laughs> Is that not to do or to do? <laughs> to do. Okay. <laughs> What would you say not to do? Do your book come with a free kickback? <laughs> free CD. <laughs> free 